Hi, my name is Claire Krieger and I am a teaching artist with Louisville Visual Art. So as our semesters are about to get started, we are also preparing to do something a little bit differently. Some of us might be making projects at home, we might be doing school at home, we might be working more remotely. But that doesn't mean that we can't have our own spaces. And that doesn't mean we can't have our own area where we can make art together. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how we can organize our art space, whether it's contained and something we bring out when we make art, or whether it's a space that always stays this way. So we can just make it up as we go along. There's different ways to do this. I'm sure we all have different resources, different spaces available to us, so you can find what works best for you. Now, I'm gonna show you two different ideas. So we're in my studio, welcome to my studio. If you ever watched Murder, She Wrote, pay attention. That's Angela Lansbury from Murder, She Wrote, and she is reminding me to pay attention, pay attention to what I'm doing to make sure that I'm being present with my artwork and present with, with other things I'm working on. So I'm going to show you a little bit in my studio because you get to see what I do personally as my organizational space. So this is my studio space. This is where I make art. Now you can probably see behind me I have a cabinet. That cabinet is very well organized actually and it has different sections of art materials. So that's a place I hold a lot of things I use pretty often. I also have a bin of collage materials and that's something I might talk about in a little bit. But so that's something that you might think about and maybe at your house you do have craft supplies in a certain space. So to store our supplies, if we're taking an after school art class, children's fine art class or something else, um, you might have some materials that you need to keep together. So if you have a designated workspace, if you have a desk in your room, or if you have a space in the house that you have shared space where you can make things together, this could be a place that is just yours. Now, if you have to move it, that's okay too. You can contain it. I have an idea for that too. So if you are going to be having all of your materials held in something, but you need to clean up every time and kind of move it away, it's in a shared space, Think about using a box. Now, I have found a pretty perfect box that would make a really good, um, I'm gonna call it an art suitcase. It's actually a pretty good box, and the reason that I'm saying it's a good box is because I like this lid, and there's a reason for the lid being closed. So look, if I packed up my art materials, I could close this box and store it wherever I need to and just bring it out when I make art. So. Addition, in addition to some of the art materials you will probably receive for any classes you are taking, I'm going to throw some other things in here that you might find helpful to keep as well. So, what do I have in here right now? Well, I have things like my glue stick, things I'm going to be using pretty often. I might keep scissors in here, probably my oil pastels. You will probably have a portfolio that will hold your papers and all your artwork you're working on, so we don't need to worry about storing our artwork right now. This is just our materials for making artwork. So I have this. Now I also started something different because you might have this in your room. You probably decorate it to make it feel more like you with things that you enjoy. I try to surround myself with things I find inspiring. In fact, I'm going to show you some of the things in my studio that I find inspiring, but I also thought it might be nice to have a little box of inspired objects. So maybe these are things I find that like inspire my art practice. So when I'm working, I might, you know, bring this container out and sit here and I can kind of be inspired these objects. So Maybe you've got a really cool pine cone or you have a pressed flower. I have a couple of really cool rocks in here. I have a little fossil and then I have a couple other rocks. So that's where I'm starting. But sometimes I just like to have a couple little things that make me feel grounded. They make me feel like they, they're special things to me. So if this is something you want to keep in your art box, um, inspirational items, that might be a neat thing. And think about how many of these sorts of things you might have in your house to store things. So now this is safe and protected and can't fall out and it can go right back in my art box. The other thing you might use these for is if you have small things like erasers or a pencil sharpener or paper clips. Perfect thing to hold it in. Here's a nice container, old cream cheese container that I've cleaned and I could store some different art materials in here. Maybe even if your oil pastel box breaks, which they tend to do over time, you could store your oil pastels in something like this. This would actually be really handy. So think about that. It's a great, the way we're working today, what I'm gonna be talking about is how to keep our art space really neat so that we don't have to worry about the organization and we can focus on making art. So if we set ourselves up to have a really helpful space and to be organized in the beginning, it's gonna be a lot easier to maintain the organization and to keep all of our items together. We won't lose our materials, we'll know where they are, so this is why we're talking about having 
uh, somewhere to keep our art supplies today. So what else do I have in my art box right now? You could also use, if you have any of these, I've had this for many years. I feel like since I was in middle school and it is what I would keep my pencils in to keep for school. Now I keep it with things that I use often for art making. So if I'm going on a trip, I might take this with me with a couple of art supplies because I couldn't necessarily take my whole box, but if I'm gonna go outside and draw, this would be a great thing to take with me. And in this, I keep an eraser. I keep my watercolor pens. These are just brushes that essentially already have water in them for watercolor paint. And then I have a couple of pens and pencils. And then in this bigger container, I have my watercolor palette and a couple of um, paper napkins. So here is all of my watercolor stuff all together. And you don't have to do this. This is also my travel version of this. So think about it that way. I just thought I'd show you because it's neat to see how other people organize sometimes. Now, it might seem as though this is a fairly bland box to store something so exciting inside. So I have a couple of ideas for us today. If this is going to be where we store our materials, I would like us to think about this lid as being an inspiration board. So just like the small items that I like to hold on to, a couple of rocks and fossils, I want something that inspires me. So not only are my art materials here, but they are inspired materials. So the inside of my lid, I am gonna call my bulletin board, my inspiration. Now the things you might keep there that we can revisit. I was thinking about if you have post-it notes for art ideas, that might be really fun. You could stick them in here. All right, maybe it says, Remember that really cool tree I saw? I wanna draw that sometime. So things to remember to be inspired by. Now, other things I might wanna keep in here, and this is a good reason to keep maybe some tape around. If you don't have tape, I'm sure you have something you could use instead. Um, you could always use a glue stick. They weren't, so I also have a picture of my dog in the mountains. I, that's something I find very inspiring. So I am going to take that in here. So look at my inspiration board, it's going somewhere. Now, I also have and this is something I've held on to a while. It's a little bit silly, but I, I really enjoy it. It is a napkin I got that says Sunnies. And it was a gas station and their logo is this silly sun with sunglasses. And I really love looking at it. So I have just kept it around. And this is a perfect lace. It's part of my inspiration. So I probably will do a little piece of tape. So imagine how I could keep going. And these things could change over time. Maybe I said, you know, I'm really tired of looking at this funny sun. I'm gonna take him off and put something else. That's fine too. So think about it as your inspiration. Or maybe you even want to paint it black first so it looks a little bit like a chalkboard, a place you could write on. Or maybe you wanna write directly on it. That's okay too. I would just think about having a place to keep ideas. So if you find something that's neat, maybe you read a newspaper article that you think is really cool about art, or maybe you find a picture in a magazine that you really like. This would be a great place to stick it. It's just a place that is for you. It's for your inspiration in your mind. It's your idea. So a place that you can put whatever you want there, things to inspire you and things to make you feel excited about making artwork. So that is my idea for the inspiration board. Now, if you are not keeping all your materials in a box, if you have a designated space, such as this desk, this is my designated art making space. I make art here and I do keep it pretty neat, but I don't have to clean it up because it's just my desk. So if that's your case, what you can do is I'm gonna talk a little about how to set things up similar to this. So maybe you still want some sort of box to hold things, but you also might think about the other things around you that could be helpful. So remove my art box. Now, I'm gonna recommend this go in our art box as well, or we keep it in our art space, our, our art suitcase, that's what I called it earlier. All right, so some newspaper. Now why would I want newspaper? To keep it neat. So I can keep this in my art box for when it gets messy, right? Or in my workspace, I could keep it here all the time if I wanted. Now what I tend to do when I am doing something messy is I will lay out a piece of newspaper and I will tape the edges. But depending on what the, if we're working on a really nice table at your house that we're taking care of, you know, maybe it's your dinner table, but you get to use it for art. We wanna make sure it's really protected. And sometimes tape can hurt the tops of tables. So I like to tape my paper down, but if you're gonna tape down, make sure you're using a tape that doesn't hurt your table. So I have masking tape and that's gonna be better than something like clear tape because 
We would hate to hurt our tables and hurt our spaces when we're trying to protect them. So when I'm making something messy, I will typically take a couple pieces of tape. Now remember, we want to save tape, so not use very much. I'm just going to use a couple pieces and strategically attach. So I'm going to put it on a corner, on another corner, and then I'm going to put two so my elbow is not shifting the paper up and down that I'm working. So I don't have to worry about it. Ah, look at that. That is so perfect. So if I get messy, it's okay. It's going to stay on the paper. So here's a nice workspace now that I have for myself. Now, if I wanted to have some inspiration around, I'm going to show you what's on this side of my table. This is my like organization and inspiration for my studio. So here we go. Now these are things I reach for often. And imagine I keep these in an open bowl because my desk does not change. But if you are using an art suitcase, this would be a great thing to go in your box. Now, I keep things in this bowl like my pencil sharpener. Again, this could go in your art suitcase box. Um, I have an eraser, I have some paper clips, I have a binder clip, things I use pretty often that I just kind of need to keep around. Almost my own little junk drawer. Same goes for this one. This one has some blades for my X-Acto knife. It has a couple things like that. Now, I always have cups of some kind to keep things in that I'm using. So I keep all sorts of things I need in here. And some of these might seem a little bit silly, but I always have a ruler. Um, I usually have a highlighter. I have a couple of pencils and markers and different things I like to write with. And then I also have things like a spoon. That's just a thing that I might find really handy in my art space. But this is my, this is what I figured out. It doesn't mean you have to have a spoon. So I always have this. This is sort of my general table materials and it's just housed in an old mug. So if you have a, a cup that you could use, but if you don't have a cup, maybe you could keep a plastic cup and decorate it. Something like that to hold your materials together. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about paint brushes. So the way that I store my paint brushes is in this jar that I want you to see is actually pretty covered in paint. That's because this does double duty as my cleaning thing when I am using brushes. So I usually keep water in this. I'll take my brushes out and then I will clean them in the water. And once I've cleaned this and this and they're dry, I can put my brushes back in. So my storage container doubles as one of the tools. And then if this is where I'm keeping my brushes, it could also go into my storage box. So I have a couple brushes that are a little too long. But imagine that that could be stored in here too. So it's all kept really neatly together. So that typically sits here because it is just staying on my desk. Now you see a few things up here probably. And again, these are my inspiration pieces. So I have a couple of inspiration pieces, artwork that my friends have made for me. This is a photograph by a friend. Um, I have a couple of Valentines from some friends, another artwork by a friend, um, artwork by friends. And so it's just, it's my space, it inspires me. So this is what I keep in my studio to look at for reference. Now, similar to this, you can have this be your reference board. So if you need to move around, you can have something like this that you can always come back to when your box is open. And if you do have a space of your own that you don't need to change, such as the desk in my studio that I use, you could also use a piece of cardboard and tape things to that. And imagine that I could just lean it against the wall and it might be my inspiration space here. You're probably also wondering, why do I have all these papers? This is sort of in progress things and also a little bit of inspiration. So I've got some test pieces for um, projects I'm working on. I've got things that are in the middle of, I have a card that was just sent to me. So I have all sorts of things sitting over here that also I'm gonna be using probably pretty consistently, but I don't wanna put them away just yet. Now I do go through this every once in a while because it gets a little bit um, filled. And I wanna show you how I'm holding it. So it is a paper divider. Do you see how I've got these? It's really great to organize your desk materials with that. And for me, and most of my desk materials are art materials, so they stay in that pretty neatly. Now, I'm going to go back to paintbrushes for a moment because I know sometimes we talk a little bit about how to clean paintbrushes properly, and it's super important, especially if you only have a couple of paintbrushes, we want to make sure we clean them properly so they do not get damaged and dry out. So I'm actually going to take us to a sink and we are going to clean some paintbrushes just because I want to make sure that we are keeping our materials not only organized, but useful and clean. So we're treating them really well. So let's go do some paintbrush cleaning. All right, so we're going to talk about the best way to wash brushes because 
Our brushes are really, really precious to us. And it always stinks when you find that you have a brush that still has a little paint in it and it dried out, it kind of ruined the brush. So I am gonna show you, this is one of my smaller brushes and I'm just gonna put some paint on it. All right, now this brush has paint on it, dark blue paint. And if I left this like this, it would dry and it would really hurt my brush. And I love this brush, this is one of my favorites. So. I think I showed you that I have a container that I keep and I use for cleaning my brushes whenever I'm painting. So if I, this is what I have on my desk, right? I have my water when I'm painting. I'm showing you in at, near to a sink because then I can actually clean this like I'm done. Because while we're painting, we wanna have a cup of water and then we can clean our brush between colors. Now, if I just do this, will this clean my brush? Does this look clean? No, it's not clean because we need to move it around a little bit. If the water's turning colors, that means our brush is getting pretty clean. Now, I don't want to be smashing my brush on the bottom because it'll hurt the shape. Remember, part of the reason is we want to keep our shape, the shape of our brushes nice and neat. And then once I feel like I've shaken it out quite a bit, I want to kind of turn it and dab it on the edge to get extra water out. Now that is a clean brush. So you can tell the water has changed colors because I have cleaned my brush. Now, at the end of painting, what we wanna do is make sure, because we've probably been rinsing our brush in water that already has a little paint in it, we wanna just rinse out our brush under a running faucet. We also wanna be careful not to leave paint in any sinks in our homes. So I'm just gonna turn on the faucet and I am gonna do this under the faucet. Because even though my brush is pretty clean, I want it to be really clean. Make sure I get any of that paint water out. And that is how you clean a brush. When you're done, do we put our brushes in the jar like this or like this? Like this. Hair up. The reason to keep the hair up is to keep the shape. Look how nice and well shaped the top of my brush is because I've taken really good care of it. So think about taking good care of your brushes. Remember to wash them and wash them properly. All right, now that we have cleaned our paint brushes, just as a reminder to keep them clean and also store them with their hair up because we do not want to change the shape. That's the reason we have different shapes of paint brushes. So I'm going to show a couple other ideas for organization and I'm going to do a little project with all of you. So something we might do to spice up our art suitcases in addition to our inspiration boards. So if you do not have post-its, if you have something um, if you want to may make notes for yourself to put on the inside lid, but you do not have post-its, I think that scrap paper will work just fine. And maybe if you have some colorful scrap paper, it will be even more fun. Now, if you do not have color paper, that's okay too. Um, we can use plain white paper. These are some scraps I have that are just orange and they're all long. So I thought I would use these as my DIY post-it notes. Now I'm just going to cut them. You might want to cut them in fun shapes, but I just want to have a little stack of little papers for ideas. Do you ever go to the library and write down what numbers you're looking for and they always have those scrap paper pieces? This is a similar idea. All right, so I now have five scrap paper pieces and I probably won't be using them all at once. There's something I want to keep around, so I'm going to store them in one of these containers. And then if I have an idea or some inspiration, um, I might, or even a sketch, I might sketch it on here and then tape it to my inspiration board. And then the extras I can keep in this bin for when I need them and go in here. Now, another way that you could keep things for inspiration, and this is what I do with some of my um, things that are too big to maybe stick on a board or something I really wanna protect. I keep a lot of things in organized binders, just like we're in school. So these are always my marker test pages. They're really fun. So inside of here, sometimes I have some drawings that I've organized with plastic sleeves. Now, plastic page protectors, you probably have these at school. Those are a good way to hold on to things too. Now I also have further back in my book, sometimes I have loose pieces. And so I'll keep those in here especially too. And these are a great way to organize. I also decorated my binder basically with marker tests and that was pretty fun. It makes it feel very festive. Now I also have these old pages from uh, a photo album, the kind that you can peel open and stick things in. And these are just some loose pieces of inspiration that I didn't want to lose. 
And so I was just storing them like this. So if you find cool magazine cutouts or um, sometimes you get things in the mail that might be neat, I like envelope pieces for collage. It might be helpful to keep them either in a plastic sleeve or in something like that. And I have a whole binder for this. You could also just have a plastic sleeve or even a plastic Ziploc in your art suitcase to bring out. So think about all the things we can use in this. And I have, this isn't quite a shoebox size for my art suitcase, but if you have an empty shoebox, that's probably a really great size. And the inside of that lid could also be your inspiration bulletin board. So we probably have portfolios that we are keeping all of our artwork in, which is great. And we might decorate our portfolios with our names, but I could also decorate this. This is something that I think we might be able to do together today is, you know, this is my art box, but I want it to feel a little bit more creative than just what it looks like. So it's kind of got some, some bubbles and stickers on it and I want people to know it's mine. So I am going to collage it. Have you ever done a collage before? They're pretty fun. You might have old magazines that you can cut up. Collaging is cutting up pieces of things and making a new composition out of it. So I have a lot of old magazines that I like to look through. And so I will just find pictures that seem pretty neat or things that I think are fun and I will put them on my uh, onto a new composition so that's something that i think i'm going to do here now this is a lot of space to cover this whole box so i'm not going to do the whole thing i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut out the letters for my name and stick them on the top and then find a couple of pictures of things that i might um feel inspired by or want to decorate the outside but i don't know if i want to cover the whole thing because that might take us a really long time but if it's something you feel like doing on your own time go for it Ooh, I like this picture of some lily pads. I'm gonna cut this out. So this, the activity that we are working on right now, the materials you will need, something like a magazine if you want a collage, and with collage, we also need a pair of scissors and a glue stick. If you wanna just draw on the outside of your box, that is totally fine too. You could use markers, you could use crayons, anything that you want to make your art suitcase yours. Turn it into your space, your object. So I'm gonna cut this out, these lily pads. Just cause I might, I think I might just stick to decorating one part of the front. And I'm also gonna start looking for letters for my name from magazines. Cause that's kind of fun and neat, unique. All right, so in the World National Geographic, there is a C, so I'm gonna cut that out. My name starts with a C. Yeah, so I've already got a couple pieces here that I'm working with. All right, so I'm gonna use a different cover for, mm, there's an A, I have an A in my first name. It looks like I could just use the cover of this magazine actually to get all of my letters. So C, let's see what else, if I'm gonna flip through. Sometimes when I like to find inspiration in magazines, I just flip through, oh my gosh. This is a very cute wolf sniffing some flowers. That would be great for my box too. If you don't have old magazines, you can even find neat pictures in newspapers. So that might be a place to look. All right, what can I find here for my name? Mm -hmm. All right, I think I have found the R I'm going to use. I hope everybody is excited about getting to make art together again. I know it's gonna be a little different this semester, but I'm really excited that we're gonna get to do it. I'm excited to see everyone. I'm excited to work on projects and embrace the fall, even if we're not in the same place. Okay, here's some more letters. All right. I've almost got my whole name, which is a great start. I just need an I. If you don't have some of the things that I have mentioned today in your home for your art suitcase, take it, think of it as a cool challenge to solve. So there are lots of containers that you can use. You can see that I keep, you know, I have a jar for my paintbrushes, but I don't need to be using a glass jar. I could use a plastic container for that to wash my brushes in. It's all up to what's around you. So I've just pulled stuff from around my house to help myself 
stay organized. Um, and if you don't have magazines to cut up, use whatever you do have. Maybe you could just use different pieces of color, colored paper. Oh, I meant to show everyone my collage bin. So in this uh, piece of furniture behind me, I pointed out that is all of my art materials. I also keep a collage bin. Now some, some art classrooms, you might see this as well. So mine's a little messy right now. I should probably go through it. So this is my collage bin. And it's basically pieces of paper that um, I have scrap pieces of, but I think they're neat and I don't want to get rid of them. And they make a lot of collages. So if you find that you really like making collages, you probably don't want to bin this size. This is a little bit much, but you could even take um, a Ziploc bag and store some of your scraps in for when you need some pieces for collage. And those scraps could go in your art suitcase. So. Sometimes we even get cool mail. I just got this cool letter from a friend and I thought the packaging was so great that I put it in my scrap paper bin because I would love to make a collage with this. So all sorts of things could go in here. That's something to think about. Sometimes we can make art out of really interesting materials. I, if you ever get a new toothpaste or buy something of the sort, sometimes it comes with really cool packaging like a cardboard box that might be really metallic or kind of look silvery. Sometimes I keep those to make art with. All right, I only need one letter left. Here we go. All right, so I have gotten all of my letters and I think because I want the top of my box to feel very special, I'm actually gonna glue my letters to this, one of these scrap pieces so that it's almost framed. All right. And I'm just putting my first name. Maybe you want it to say first names suitcase or first names art material. So if I wanted to add like Claire's art box, that's something I could do here. But I'm just gonna start with my name because I can always add more. Collaging all these letters, so I'm getting, I'm putting glue, my glue stick on the back of each one and gluing them to my orange scrap paper. And I actually have room on my orange to write box or art. Okay. So, just has my name on it. Alright, so I am going to attach this to the top of my box. And then it is really on its way towards holding all of my art supplies. I think it's helpful to have a box that has a lid so that you can close it and you won't lose anything. Shoe box would be especially good for that. I didn't have a shoe box, but I did have this one, which I think is pretty good. All right, and you've seen all the stuff I keep in here. I've got my bulletin board. Now, I think it might be better to actually tape down both sides so when we close it, it doesn't do this. So that's something to think about too, to keep things really secure. Now, I'm actually gonna take off my Sunny for now, to reattach later. So now that I have all my materials in my box, I can close my box, got my name on it. I've cut out a couple of pieces of things I'm gonna attach. So I might attach these lily pads to the front, just so my box is a little bit more festive. All right. I didn't even realize what on the back of this is cicadas. That's probably something you are all hearing. I can actually hear it from inside of my house right now. Pretty cool. I think it might be neat to find another picture of water or another picture that's got darker colors in it for the other side. So this is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe decorate the outside of the box. And those are my organizational tips today for you. I hope that this has been helpful or exciting or get you, getting you excited for the semester starting and ready to make some art. So think about how you wanna organize your materials. And it can be up to you. These are just ideas. These are jumping off points. If you have a different idea of organizing your art, that is great. I would love to see how all of you organize your art material. So remember, it doesn't have to be that you have a space designated. You can have something to hold your items in that you can decorate. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, I can't wait to see everyone and I can't wait to make art with all of you.